Hello, this is Jeff Gold, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the history of my interest in protecting the environment. And one of the biggest inspirations I've had is my Aunt Rita, who I'm sitting with here in Methuen, Mass. Uh, back when I was 13 years old, I was just that big, and I got a book about carnivorous plants, and I devoured the subject. And I was visiting my aunt, and we came out here, and I got maps of the area trying to find where carnivorous plants might grow locally and we went up to our wastes together in swamps we got all muddy and no one else that i knew would do this except my aunt rita and she was wonderful uh, she would take me everywhere to uh, see these plants up near where she lived down on cape cod and um and it was real inspiring and i remember there was a type of a sundew it's a type of carnivorous plant that we found yeah. growing just two or three miles from Rita's house here, and the plants uh, of this species, uh, Strasser rotundifolia, most typically are about the size of a quarter or a little larger. But oh. the ones that we found were about this big around. They're four or five inches around, and the traps on them were the size of dimes. Uh, so they were. You sure live out here? They were much larger All than. Oh, stuff is out here. Yeah. <laughs> so they were much larger than you could find uh, anywhere else I had ever seen them. And so it was pretty amazing. And they were growing on the side of a gravel road, uh, just around some uh, small ponds next to that road. And uh, so I was studying those plants and it was just really amazing. Now I came back uh, four or five, six years later. And when I went down that same road, instead of the road being gravel, it was now paved. It had pavement on it. And just that one subtle change to the road made it so that the ecosystem changed so that those sundews were no longer there. And the Good vegetation uh, changed. Just the one little change, just by paving one road nearby, the entire ecosystem for hundreds of acres was changed, completely changed. Really? And I remember we went down the street, Jesus. we found two or three little tiny sundew plants behind some building. And now I'm going to probably go down there in a little while and take another video to add to this one of what that street is now. But as far as I recall, I went there a few years ago and it's now completely paved and warehouse businesses and things like that. But no trace of anything that used to be there. But as a youngster, when I was 13, I saw these amazing carnivorous plants growing there that were unlike any other representatives of this species, Drosser rotundifolia went back years later and saw how such a subtle change in the environment changed everything, I was inspired that I have to do something about that. And as I've gone oh, through what? life, I've gone through life, how, how can we inspire people to care more about environment, not pave ah. everything, leave more parks, uh, ah. do more things to protect the plants uh, and the animal species. And um, now, it starts where, with kids. Where do you, oh, I'm just going to ask you, where do you spell all this? In a school? Well, uh, I share it with uh, students that come to a nature center I run down in Georgia. Mm -hmm. And I teach them about how important it is. Because my idea is if I was so affected when I was 13 years old, maybe if I reach kids when they're in fifth grade, sixth grade, middle school, high school, and teach them about the importance of these ecosystems and how delicate and fragile they are, then when some of them grow up and some of them might be building houses or become developers or what not, yeah. hopefully more of them will take the time to care about the wetlands and the habitats around them and show respect to the animals. So uh, none of what I've been doing, I don't think would have ever happened had I not been inspired by the time shared with my Aunt Rita here, who I love so dearly. Oh, Jeff, I'm so glad you came. <laughs> Today I was going to take Aunt Rita out to what's called a quaking bog, a place- well, what? Quaking Bog, it's a place where there's a pond where sphagnum moss grows on top of the water. I don't know about this. You used to take me to them when you were a little younger. Um, and you know where it is now? Yeah, I know where they are now. I was going to try to take her out, but she not wasn't quite up to the trip this morning. But we're going to do it another time. But I'm going to try to get out there today myself and just show what a Quaking Bog is, where some of these carnivorous plants grow. It's protected by the Nature oh, Conservancy. To you. Wonderful organization. So. Wow. Wow. Well, good for you. Well, thank you for inspiring me. <laughs> Being so great to me. I love you, Jeff.
I'm standing on here now is a place I visited back about 32 years ago. And at that time, this was a gravel road and there was a really beautiful wetland area here. Uh, the wetland area still exists. There's still moisture in the soil. You can see all the cattails and other marsh plants growing there. But it's a very different kind of habitat than it was before. Uh, growing on... I'm sorry? I'm just doing a little documentary for a, um, for a website. So I was just briefly interrupted by a couple of people from General Mills who now own several plants on the street. And they were saying that I didn't have authorization to take videos of the plants on the other side of the street. I don't know why. I don't think there's any particular trade secrets I'll be seeing in the buildings there. But anyway, this is the habitat where the uh, very unusually large Drosser rotundifolia plants were growing in the past. They were growing all the way right up on this bank. Uh, and um, obviously the ecosystem has changed so drastically that they are no longer there. Matter of fact, long before any of this industrial plants were here, uh, there were a loss of these plants. Uh, it was just simply paving this road, making it a paved road rather than a gravel road that changed the drainage and such that um, decimated the plant system here. And just as progress, they call it, goes on, uh, things have changed and it's now just an industrial area.